So about 15 years ago, uh, two different teams of astronomers studying uh, dif distant star, exploding stars called supernovae, uh, found uh, that the supernovae were a bit fainter than they expected them to be. And we interpreted this as evidence that the expansion of the universe is speeding up. And that was a surprise because we thought that the expansion should be slowing down because of gravity. Everything in the universe attracts everything else. Uh, so this was kind of a surprise. It was awarded the Nobel Prize two years ago. And so we invent this stuff called dark energy, which we think makes up about three quarters of the universe, um, to explain uh, this, this cosmic speed up, this cosmic acceleration. And dark energy is just a name for this stuff that would cause the universe to expand uh, more rapidly. Uh, we don't really understand its properties. Um, there are some theoretical ideas about what it could be. And what we want to do with this new generation of surveys is to try to understand and get at the properties of dark energy with greater precision. Basically, what we're, what we're fundamentally trying to get at is, is two things. One is sort of the history of the cosmic expansion. Uh, and the other is the history of the growth of structure in the universe. Uh, because dark energy affects both of those things. Uh, and so there's multiple ways to get at those two basic things. Uh, supernovae was one way to get at just the, the history of the expansion. Clusters of galaxies are another method um, where simply by taking a census of galaxy clusters, these are large agglomerations of tens to hundreds to thousands of galaxies, in a relatively small volume of space, just by counting how many clusters there are uh, as we look f deeper and deeper in space, uh, that gives us a handle on the growth of structure uh, and therefore on the possible effects of dark energy. And so that's one of the methods uh, that actually people here at, uh, at KAIPAC and, and elsewhere have been developing and which we'll exploit in these, these new surveys. Cosmic shear is, uh, is one example of what we call weak gravitational lensing. And the idea here is that the light from distant galaxies, as it travels towards us, uh, doesn't travel in, in exactly straight lines. The light gets bent uh, because it's passing through the gravitational field of clumps of dark matter on its way to us. And so that bending of the light from distant galaxies leads to a distortion in the apparent shapes of those distant galaxies. Um, and uh, we measure those distortions statistically by trying to measure the shapes of thousands to millions of, or hundreds of millions of galaxies and comparing them to each other. Um, and again, what we can do is through that statistical measurement, uh, get a handle on um, how the distribution of clumps of dark matter has changed over cosmic time. And so that's that, along with clusters and supernovae, that's sort of a third method that we use to, to try to probe dark energy. If dark energy, this fluid or stuff that makes up 70% of the universe, if that's what's driving cosmic acceleration, then there's a certain relationship between the history of cosmic expansion and the growth of structure that we'll see. Uh, so it's kind of a consistency test. If instead there's something strange going on with gravity that we need to replace Einstein's general relativity with some new theory, if that's what's causing cosmic speed up, uh, then we'll expect there to be a different relationship between the information we get from the expansion history and the information we get from the growth of structure. Uh, and so by comparing those two things, uh, we can see at least if, if the results are consistent with dark energy or instead would require some, some modification of gravity. And again, that gets back to your earlier point that um, that's why we need this multiplicity of techniques, uh, not just the supernovae, not just the clusters, not just the weak lensing. We want all of them because each of them probe uh, you know, both the expansion history and the growth in different ways. So if we're really going to have a hope, I think, of distinguishing whether it's dark energy or, or gravity, um, we're going to need all these different techniques working together. So my view is that, um, that the, you know, the field of dark energy has entered a phase where it has to be 
driven by data, driven by new experiments, new surveys. Um, I came into this field as a theorist, coming up with different models for what dark energy could be. And it's easy to play that game. You can come up with lots of different models. But it's hard to know what to do with them um, because we don't have enough data of enough constraining power to say we should go down this theoretical path rather than that theoretical path. And so, in my view at least, you know, the next years are going to be about these larger surveys uh, constraining things more precisely so that we'll know, gee, we should be going down the path of looking at vacuum energy or we should be going down the path of looking at um, you know, these so-called quintessence models or we should be thinking more about uh, how to monkey around with gravity. And so I think we're now at a phase where, yes, we have clever theorists. Uh, they've come up with a, a whole menu of possibilities for what, what could be causing the universe to speed up. And we really now need more data, better data, to, to give us a hint as to which path to go down.